Hello, and welcome to Makers.dev episode 61, which, similar to the number 59, Chris, is prime. <laughs> Those are two very prime numbers. <laughs> Just want to make sure we clear that <laughs> clear that right up. That's right. Uh, they are called, uh, I looked it up, they're called twin primes when they're like that, when they're back to back. Oh, yeah. oh that's cool. Yeah, yep. good. Twin primes, good. That's what that's what we've always said. No confusion there. That's uh, <laughs> weak in math. No need to talk about that any further. Yep. Uh, good. <laughs> how uh, how are you? How was snow tubing? Tell, tell me all about that. Yeah, I'm doing all right. Uh, I went snow tubing. Um, so I uh, last week I was sort of upset because office hours got moved. Which, by the way, I found out they were moved. Like this guy had a you know very important doctor's appointment he couldn't miss, and so like I feel bad even complaining about it because like he's dealing with stuff. Sure. Anyway, uh, it, uh, it, was, it was great. Um, snow tubing, it's kind of like, um, it, it's like a flat bottom tube and they, I don't know if they wax it or if it's just really, you know, fast, like really slick plastic. Um, and there's a giant hill and you go down, it, it feels really, really fast. It's probably like, I don't know, 20 miles an hour maybe. Um, but it feels faster and you're going, you know, face first down a, on a tube. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and my five-year-old did it, <laughs> which. Oh boy. Yeah. Uh, and. Alone. She, yeah yeah alone yeah uh, you can That's hold, amazing. so you everyone has to be in their same their own tube but you can hold on to the person's tube and so we okay. went down together a few times uh but then she went alone and alone on her belly at you know 20 miles an hour or something and it's it's just on that side of dangerous where you're like like if she flipped like over or something or like i, I don't think she would die but it would not be a good day yeah, uh, yeah but everything was fine you know it was it was the safest that that kind of dangerous sport could be i think that like they had lanes and they had people watching the lanes and stuff so um yeah it was a lot of fun that's good good job being a dad pushing your kids a little bit out of the comfort zone to do something there and uh not like right on the edge of their competency uh flat bottom tubes i believe is a queen song uh that was, was that was that <laughs> was a joke uh yes. okay <laughs> <laughs> Uh, was that, was that something that, uh, your five-year-old was driving? Like, was she, was she gunning to, to go by herself? Uh, so she is the type of kid who will, like, she kept saying, like, I don't know if I want to do this. I don't know if I want to do this. I don't know if I want to do this. And then by the end of it, she was like, let's do it again. Let's do it again. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. She, she always does that with, with things that are slightly like she might grow up to be kind of an adrenaline kind of junkie. Cause she's always <laughs> like, everything is, uh, like she's scared of it until she does it. And then she wants to keep doing it over and over. So yeah cool how fun what a, what an obviously correct decision i'm glad that's what you chose uh uh what what was the what was the damage what uh i think the choice last time we talked was academics and personal career and like get to uh stay at this uh be able to do the, the office hours so that you get full marks what uh what was the consequence of that uh yeah so no damage i got full points on my homework um, oh, I, I, uh, yeah. Uh, and I think you mentioned like I might have an epiphany while snow tubing. Uh, I actually did. Amazing. I, uh, <laughs> I, I had solved the problem before I left just and and like, I felt pretty good about the solution. And so I felt fine about going. And then while on the, you know, snow tubing, I was like, I remembered something from a lecture, which reinforced the, the solution I had found. And so Beautiful. like, um, yeah, so it was, it was good all around. You were Love right. It should have just went which i did and it was fun so. what's the meta lesson to be learned here when when faced with a similar decision in the future uh it, is the answer like always choose the more fun thing what what have we learned I, yeah i think it's the same like you know when you get stuck in a problem like go for going for a walk is often the most productive thing you can do yeah um, so it, it felt like that kind of thing you know like just getting out of what you're what you're in right now and stepping away for a little bit well give you I'm reminded of uh when I was getting into meditating, there was a, a saying I heard from people that if you if you don't have time to meditate for ten minutes, you need to meditate for two hours. <laughs> right. And I think about that every time I'm too busy to meditate, and it used to make me really mad. But I think I've come to a place where I realized, like, oh yeah, if I'm if I'm way too if I'm if I'm so caught up in the thing that I'm doing, I'm just drilling forward and, and feeling like. I don't have 10 minutes to spend doing something. I have derailed the work life balance machine of my life. And the way to get back on is to do something as radical as meditating for two hours. Um, I wish I could be more consistent in doing that. Um, but I think, I think that's the sort of lesson that I took from this of like, 
I, I think I think like very clearly the priority was spending time with family and uh, getting to enjoy this yourself. And like, what a, what a beautiful memory you've created with your five year old of like, uh, you know, when you're at her prom and she's, you know, I don't know, her dress has come undone and she's got to re sew it and you're off on her. <laughs> I'm trying to contrive a situation. <laughs> she's trying to do something difficult and sure. she's older. And you can go in there and be like, ah, I remember when you were five years old and this is just like the time when you said you couldn't do the tubing thing, but you were able to do it. Like what a, what a core memory now that's been created. Um, I don't know where I was going with the prom dress, like that she was going to resew it. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like a Cinderella type thing. I get your point. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so like uh, the, the, the priority there I think was straight. So, so. And I think in my own life, I experience this most often with things like meditating. Like I, I have, when I can step back and look at my life holistically, I can make the clear choice of like, oh, you know, is it more important to do work or to meditate? Well, meditating is more important. And like over the course of my life, I would, I would rather be doing more of that. So if I find myself in a, in a situation where I feel like I have to choose, I should always choose doing the meditating. That's a, that's a deeper, more foundational thing that then enables me to be able to do better work. So given the choice, I should choose to cut out more time out of work to, to use towards meditating. Um, I think that's my lesson. Yeah. Yeah. Mine too. I mean, left to my own devices, I would have sat and, you know, I, I would sit and do work 20 hours a day. So, uh, yeah. uh, yeah, it's whatever your proclivity is, then you should probably do force yourself to do the opposite. So mine is to work. So I should force myself to, you know, mm. have free time. And, uh, if someone though is, if theirs is to be you know, have free time all the time, then maybe you have to take the exact opposite approach. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I like that. Figure out what your tendency is and, and be pushing yourself towards more of the balance. That also makes yeah. sense. Cool. What else did you get up to this week? What was the stuff you're doing while you were not fighting the impulse to work all the time? Yeah. Um, so it's learning more of the machine learning stuff. Um, I, we talked a little bit last time about how can I be teaching some of the math stuff that I have to relearn because I have to relearn yeah, yeah. like some of the stuff. Um, and so I, I posted, uh, something on Twitter. I was basically like, uh, anyone want to learn some math? Um, and it got, it got a decent amount of off of votes. And so I think, you know, even like the audience of developers I have, you know, cares about math in the same way that I do. Like it's, it is always interesting to hear about something that you learned before as, as long as the perspective is a little bit new or it's a little bit applicable, applicable applies to what you're doing right <laughs> um uh and so yeah so i think i'm gonna try to make um some content to try to teach some of the stuff that i have to learn so i'm wonderful trying to figure out a sustainable way that i can be doing that uh while still doing all my studying um yeah and then i did some kaggle stuff as well so i'm a little bit stuck so there's another place i'm a little bit stuck on, on the con on the contest the essay contest um mm -hmm. like i have more ideas but i'm sort of getting tired of it or, or, or i'm a little bit like out of and you know ideas right now so i might take a break from that um there are a couple others i could do they actually just re they just launched like three new ones that i could do if i wanted to or i could do uh there's this contest on this other platform mi2 um so we'll see yep that's Wonderful. what i got to i am so excited to learn math from you what sorts of thoughts do you have around how you're gonna teach that what's that so like? i i like video because mm -hmm. i like making videos and i think there are um there are not that many short video things for the math that I want to learn. Mm -hmm. um, like, so I, I want to try to make the video. I like learning from video. A lot of people don't like it, but I do. So I want to try to make the videos that I want to watch to learn mm -hmm. the ML math. Um, and I'm, I'm still trying to figure out exactly how I'm going to do it. There, there's a project called Remotion that lets you make videos in React, which is pretty cool. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked about that. Yeah, yep. yeah. It's, it's yeah, like, so. a, like a After Effects, but uh, it's all defined in React. It is exactly. Yeah. So you can basically make anything you can do in react, you can do, and then you can animate all the parts of it and then you can save it as an MP4. And that's pretty much what it does. Yep. Um, and that would be really fancy because then I could use like uh, WebGL and stuff to do like plotting. If I want to like plot things, um, yeah. Or canvas, you know, I can plot on that and stuff and then I can animate it all. So I'm playing with that. So maybe that's cool. So that, uh, that, that would be like the, uh, Oh, you, you just sent me a video of, of uh, three blue, one Brown, three blue, one Brown. Yeah. Yep. Yes. I love his animation style of, uh, yeah. he just published a video on uh, a wordle solver and 
the way oh man it's it's the same sort of aesthetic for all of his videos but the way he does graphs and it can like zoom in and out and it's it's beautiful whatever the framework is using for that um so yeah if you if you have your own way of doing that that would enable a lot of uh that uh, very nice visuals for for this sort of thing i would caution you because i have been in this position <laughs> don't get lost in making the tool yes don't forget yes. that the tool is to make the videos yes that's uh, right. so three blue one brown he, say it again three blue one brown actually made his own he has his own like pipeline for doing all that like he wrote his own software to do that um, it, it, but that yeah, was after he had a million it. subscribers you know that's what right he, yeah, yeah he made the videos first and then like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. don't, don't uh don't do the premature optimization if this was me i would get so excited about like ah, oh, i could have the perfect framework for making these videos and then i'd spend two months making the tool and then as soon as it was done i'd be like i am bored with this i want to do something else yep. uh i i have not yet found that balance for myself but it, it might look like you know have have some schedule that you're doing videos on and just right off in the back of your head like this is going to be bad the visualizations aren't going to be optimal but in the process of doing this and just getting more videos out i'm, I'm putting in the reps and then for the tool i'm making it, it's has this immediate applicability that you know i'm working on this video right now that i can make this specific animation a little bit better um and then if you're doing both in parallel it, it, it's still getting done uh yeah that's that's a trap that i fall into all the time that's that's difficult for me yeah the, the screenshot i posted was actually just some handwritten notes i did on procreate which is like a drawing app mm -hmm. on the ipad um so i could just do that too like I could, yeah it's probably what i should do for the first couple um just to see how it yeah. goes absolutely if i could nudge you in a direction like get the first 10 videos out just with procreate not with anything custom and then you know you can still do the custom thing on the side and but but then when you're making it like you have very clear like oh this is the visual visual vis, visualization we're having trouble with the words today yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, applicable you started That's an a ah. yeah yeah a applicable applicable. Uh, applicable yeah um but the uh if you've already made a video and you already have an example that you did in procreate uh that to me is much easier to build the tool for also like the the use case is much simpler like i know what the input and output is i know what the end result is supposed to look like i know where it slots into this bigger process um so by by making the videos it would also make making the tool easier and uh more useful so yeah really cool i, I love that idea um I'm, I'm really excited for that and fits really well in this new growing direction of your life of this ml stuff like this is now a, a piece of a, a, a string of content that's going to be feeding this ai interested audience that uh is the the direction that your interest is moving in yeah and i don't know we can i, I haven't fully formed my thoughts about this so we can talk about this some other time but that brought up something like uh it feels very strange for me to be shifting more towards AI stuff. Like I still think about myself as a web developer. Um, mm. So I, like, I don't even know if I want to shift everything towards AI ML stuff. And so uh, it's something, you know, something I'm thinking about in the back of my head, like I'm doing this whole, this whole master's degree around it and I'm doing a lot of KL competitions, but it's like, it still feels weird to, to think of myself as going in that direction. I don't know. Mm. The, the advantage for you, I think comes from being a master of both worlds. You don't, you don't have to be that good of a web developer and you don't have to be that good of an AI developer uh, to have this unique skill set that you're pretty good at both of those things and now you can do these really interesting things that, that no one else could do. The, the people very deep in AI research don't know a thing about web development and vice versa. So by, by being able to bridge those two gaps, I think you'll be able to see opportunities that not many other people uh, can see, I think. I, I like the direction you're following. I'm just sort of like following your interest and um developing this deeper skill set you you don't have to only be one thing you get to be the sum total of all the things that you are yeah yeah that's a good way to think about it uh you mentioned kaggle competitions also did we yep. talk i can't remember if we talked on or uh off the podcast of recording of the the snow one did I, we record that i don't know i think that was off the podcast uh okay I, I well, we'll recap that in case. Yeah. i'll recap the snow competition um so uh, there's a I think I mentioned the other sites. So there's, there's, there's this other competition site, um, and the U.S. government, like one of the departments, is running this uh, competition to um, predict the – it's the snow water equivalent in uh, the entire western United States. And snow water equivalent is if you take all the snow on the ground and melted it to water, how many inches would that be? 
And that's really important because when it melts in the spring, it's going to flow to the different places. And you have to know that across the whole U.S., or, you know, across, like, it's very important if it's on, you know, the west or the east side of the Rockies because then it flows to a completely different part of the U.S. So to predict, like, water uh, use or, like, how much water is going to be available to farmers in the summertime, they have to know the snow water equivalent in the wintertime. Um, and they do it today with, uh, there's, like, 400 or something like that stations around the western united states but they wanted to be able to take that data and extrapolate to the entire i looked it up 11 million square kilometers of the western united states wow so in any one of those square kilometers you know basically how much snow is on the ground uh, right now um yeah and so uh you can i the problem though is so, so the reason i'm interested in this competition is because uh the prize pool the top prize is one hundred fifty thousand dollars, which Ooh. is a lot of money <laughs> um and there are not that many people competing uh, actually there are there's like two stages there were a thousand people in the first stage and there's only right now 87 people in the second stage competing mm-hmm. for this top prize um the problem though is i joined late like i only have there's only a week and a half left or something and that is usually not enough time to do mm-hmm. well even with only 87 people um competing so I'm still going to try. I think that like the, the prize pool is big enough that it's worth trying. Um, but it is it, one reason that so many people dropped out from the first part to the second part is the data is actually really tricky to get because it's not like, so with Kaggle, they try to pre-process all the data and they give it to you in this nice, you know, format. And they say, here you go with this one. It's like, here is some data. You can also use any one of these like 20 government websites. You have to go find the data, download it, figure out how to process it. And so it's actually really tricky to get all the data that you need. Um, and that's where I'm struggling too. And so I, I see why a lot of people dropped out because actually getting the right mm-hmm. data is really hard. Um, but if you can solve that, then there's some prize money to be had. So yeah, I'm also working on that one. That's sort of tight deadline, impossible amount of work uh, uh, situation, I think is the sort of thing that we thrive in. <laughs> like, could be. Yeah. I, uh, I could totally see you just getting absorbed in this and, and you know, the next time you're out snow tubing, uh, getting an idea of like, ah, I could build a scraper to go and get all this data. And, uh, yeah, cool. I'm, I'm excited. Uh, and that, so, you, so by next episode, you said a week and a half before the deadline to be able to get in the second stage. Is that right? Yeah. It's February 15th, which is a, like a week and a day from now. So okay. yeah. that's a tight deadline. That's very yep. exciting. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and then you're also still, I think, working on the Kaggle competition for the essay writing stuff. Yeah, that's the one I'm sort of stuck on. Um, okay. I'm in like 30th place right now out of like 1,100, so I'm doing pretty well actually. But that's I'm great. Yeah, having real trouble. Like in almost all Kaggle competitions, there is kind of this line between like there's a whole bunch of people that sort of get to this line, and then there's the top like 20 people that always do really really well. Like they always mm-hmm. find a feature or find a method or something. And they always do really well. And I haven't mm-hmm. found that yet, which means I'm sort of stuck. Um, and so uh, since the snow competition, the deadline is in a week. Uh, mm-hmm. I was thinking I was going to stop the essay competition and, and do the snow one for a little bit just to see, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, take a break. And like we said, you know, and when I come back to it with fresh eyes, maybe I'll I'll see something new. So, yeah, yeah. reasonable. That makes sense to me. Yep. I'm reminded of a Pareto distribution. Are you familiar with that concept? The, the, the Pareto prin- rule, the principle, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. The, this idea that like this pattern pops up over and over and over of the, the a very small percentage of things have the most of whatever the resource is. So uh, people point to economics and like, ah, how terrible is it that so few people have all the world's money? But if you look at just naturally occurring processes of like, you know, if you plot the the mass in the stars in the universe, it's the same curve. Uh, so that's unsurprising that consistently there's like 20 people that you know are, are significantly above everyone else and uh if you if you haven't discovered the things that they have to be able to go in that place that there's a there's a big gap to get there cool i'm excited sounds like the next week is going to be a bunch of kangling it up <laughs> you're not going to need to run your house heater uh as much because your gpu is going to be doing the heating for you that's right. That's right. I actually had to stop it because it's right next to me and it was making lots of noise. And so I stopped it for this podcast. So I'm going to oh. turn it right back on after. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to wrap it up quick. Then. <laughs> Get that to, uh, to be crunching some more stuff. Cool. Uh, I have uh, three big things and two small things I would love to talk about. Last week, we were talking about uh, how, to, how to capture this lightning in a bottle of this incredible motivation that I had the week before and just feeling really in the groove. Uh, I did not 
I, I wasn't able to do that with file inbox this last week, but oh mm. boy, I sure was able to do it with other stuff. Uh, one project in particular that I'm, I would need some advice on. Um, but before that, I had this idea. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's really hot right now is Wordle. Uh-huh. And you know something else really hot right now is uh, NFTs and crypto in general. Sure. So I had the idea. What if there was a version of Wordle where you guessed the private key to a crypto wallet? And so I bought the domain name Do- dogecoinal.com <laughs> and I think also .app or something. It, it doesn't quite roll off the tongue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's ambiguous spelling. And I don't know what to do about this idea. I, <laughs> there's, there's this framework of ideas of like, that, that like the idea is this living, breathing, spiritual thing and like it comes and visits you and inhabits you and it, it's trying to find someone who can bring it into existence. And under that framing, like this idea popped in my head and I was like, really? <laughs> this, I don't want to do this. But, oh gosh, I guess we'll buy the domain name and just see what happens. Here's the reason why I am, I'm torn on this. I think it's gambling and I don't want to make a gambling site. And I was thinking through, like, man, if I started offering prize money, like, people are going to want to hack into my Google account and I'm going to start getting, like, social phishing things with my yeah. phone. And I don't want to do that. So maybe I could do it anonymously. But, like, that'd be really hard to do because the way that this would be structured, I, I couldn't quite do it anonymously. Like, it, it doesn't it doesn't quite work with having it be a, a decentralized app. Uh, it would have to have some sort of a centralized database. And so now whatever that centralized database is, if it's a Firebase database, now people are just going to try to hack into that. And man, that, that it would just be so much trouble. Um, but on the flip side, how cool would that be? <laughs> like there's this treasure hunt that uh, thinking about like the, the game mechanics of this is really interesting to me of like, maybe you pay per guess and maybe, maybe everyone's guess is public and maybe it's not the private key that you're guessing. Maybe it's like a much longer string that you're trying to guess. And I could, I could ramp up and down the difficulty of how hard it was to guess. And I could, I could alter the rules so that it got more or less information. Like maybe you can only get, you know, five bits of feedback at maximum based on trying to guess this, uh, base 58 gigantic private key string or something. That's where I am right now. I, what, <laughs> please help. I don't, I don't know what to do. Oh uh, yeah. I, so, okay, I think this is a great idea that you should definitely not do. <laughs> that's, okay. That's where I come down on it. Um, if you pay per guess, like, it's almost certainly gambling. And, uh, you know, ethics of gambling aside, I think it might be illegal unless you get the right licenses. Yeah. Um, uh, unless you... So when you tweeted about this, I thought, like, maybe there's a play about, like, the penny bid sites where you bid. You, you pay... You don't pay, like, a gamble... You, know, you don't you don't pay like a wager, but you pay like for the bids, and then the bids happen to be you know for things that have value. Um, mm. So I think that's how they get around it. Um, and then the sweepstakes is if you don't pay, then that's more like a sweepstakes, and so you can get this private. You can guess on this private key for free somehow. Then that's more like a sweepstakes. Anyway, it seems like a giant hassle. <laughs> <laughs> like, sure does. <laughs> um, I I think it's a really neat idea though, and and I had the idea so. I think you take it a step further. And uh, instead of you putting up these private keys, if you have other people able to like produce strings that other people can guess, and then they get some of the money, and then you get some of the mm. money, you know, like if you did this in a smart contract way, um, then that's where it gets really interesting, uh, but mm. also probably illegal. And so, <laughs> yeah. And then there's like this whole game theory thing where, you know, people will figure out exactly the right, you know, ratio of. Uh, bonus prize uh, amount to bid price and all yeah, this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's a very interesting idea. Uh, I don't think you should do it. <laughs> Man, it would be like a platform to let people make their own lotteries. Yeah. Yeah. There's, yeah. I just don't see this going well. I Okay, good. Okay, that's, that's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> I appreciate the affirmation that it's a good idea, and I agree that <laughs> I should not do it. Uh, I think then idea i release you you i i've <laughs> excellent i've given you your best chance some person listening to this podcast might want to take you up and uh can live in their brain so yeah. anyone listening I, to this please do this if you want the domain name i bought it's not very good but you can you can have it yeah i think there is a kernel of a neat idea there uh but i don't exactly know what it is without getting into a lot of trouble like you talked about so i think if you were if you were able to structure it so it was entirely a smart contract 
yeah, that's the part that I'm stuck on. But like, yeah, you can't because there, there's no way that I can figure out that you can have a smart contract with secret information. Other, do, like maybe 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 the smart ra- contract is storing a hash. You could do random information. Or, or yeah, you could do a hash. So the smart contract is storing the hash, and then the smart contract can verify that you've guessed the hash. Oh, that might actually be a solution to it. But then you can't get like the the yellow letters and stuff. Yeah, you wouldn't be getting the feedback. Interesting. Yeah, because a hash doesn't a hash doesn't it just says like did you did you guess it or not? Ah, uh, okay. This idea might still be planted there, but I don't know. All right, I I just want to be done with it. <laughs> I, there's still smart contracts are really interesting. I still want to figure out something to, to be able to do with this, but I, I don't know. It, this this isn't this isn't quite there. Maybe there's a separate system that's giving you more information, and then you're just interacting with the smart contract to get it. But you still so have no to con- use. control a second system. I think you can. You might be able to do it with random things, like it's someone guesses, and then every word has some random chance of being gray yellow or green and then once it's yellow or green it's set in the smart contract i don't know how smart contracts work maybe this is not possible but like mm-hmm. so once someone guesses it and the random thing you know decides that it's yellow then it's set as yellow. yeah 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 um and then there's That's some other random chance uh, but then it's even more like a lottery so <laughs> yeah yes yeah, it's, it's like a lottery that like it takes a certain amount of guesses to pin this thing down yeah interesting and then it it tries to be consistent that's effectively just just a lottery, though. Like, like functionally, that's no different from saying, you know, if math.random is less than 0. 0.01, then yeah. you get the money. Yeah. Which, like, that in itself is sort of an interesting thing. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm done. That's <laughs> cool potential, but I, I still struggle with things that make sense to, to do on hmm. uh, to deploy on the blockchain. Uh, cool. Thing number two. I had my call with Rachel, my fantastic executive assistant, about how to uh, be consistently getting customers on the phone. I have never felt like such a boss. It just, it felt so good. I was like, okay, here's what needs to happen. You need access. You need uh, uh, availability access to my personal calendar. You need edit access to my work calendar. Let me do those. Did you get those? Yes, good. Uh, you need to be able to send these emails. I, I want to be having two to three of them a week between these times, uh, 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, here's the email to, to send them. And it was just the template straight out of Deploy Empathy. And I was like, any questions? He was like, uh, yes, actually, I have this question because now we're, you know, you're asking me to, to schedule meetings for you. So like, uh, you know, what do you want the meeting to be titled? And uh, she had some some minutiae question like that. Uh, and I was like, okay, great. We're, we're nailing this down. And after this 30 minute phone call, like we had nailed down, here's this new system. And I had a call uh, with a a customer last week. It wasn't scheduled by her, but uh, it it sort of part of this effort of uh, working with her. And it felt so good. It was this call and we talked about stuff and I was like, oh my gosh, what a, like you're a very valuable customer in healthcare. And like, ah, this is a really good idea for a feature of a thing that I'd like to support. And uh, I, I, understand this process that you're in of it was just good like i I want more of that to be happening um and the idea that i could enable more of that to happen by installing a program in a person (laughs) of like here's the system that i want to happen and i was able to package it up i think very clearly of like i read this book and here's this process and uh please do this part of it because that's the part that i don't want to be doing and then it's it just happens like this is magic i oh it's great um i i would have benefited from doing this years ago. And, and I don't know from, from, from the last meeting, I, I feel like I've only recently gotten to a place where I could have had that conversation. Like, I, I think, I think it's taken me a long time to get to this place where I think that the work that I'm doing is worth doing and valuable. And that I know the thing to be doing, to be helping more people and generating more value in the world. So like to be able to come to a conversation like that and be like, here's what you need to do. And this is going to make the world better because you're going to be helping me do this. And this is going to do this. And that's going to help these people. Uh, that's something I've only recently been able to do. And so, uh, feels really good. Uh, so thank you for helping me smooth that out. 
uh, that, that's going to lead to a lot more customers getting talked to and a much better product. Cool. Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting that you say that. It's, it's only recently that you thought you could uh, do this. I think that's a problem that builders, like us as builders, have that business people may not have. You know, I think uh, it's... Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's just in our nature to, to discount what we do, you know, and, and like we mentioned before, software is basically magic. And so like the ability for these people to accept files is absolutely helping them. And so, yeah. you know, um, and, and then of course, talking to your customers is going to help them as well because uh, they're going to feel heard and you're going to be able to, you know, do feature, you know, features for them and stuff. And so, um, yeah, I think uh, I'm glad that you're at the place now. My, my, my guess is that it was all in your head that, that you weren't you know, ready to do this. And so, yeah, yeah, yeah. good. For sure. It feels like a personal growth. Uh, thank you for pushing me to get this done and <laughs> helping me uh, feed the pipeline. Um, I'd like to pause here and see if, if anything else comes to mind of other stuff to be doing. Right now, I have her on customer support emails, which is taking up most of her time. But that inbox is just getting demolished, which I, my, oh, it's such a light blow it off my yep. chest like off oh, this yep. is something i've struggled with for the last eight years that like it's I, I i have a solution to it now i don't oh it's so good and like i'm only interacting with her with the ones that she can't handle and it's very reasonable that she can't handle them because like there's not a process for it yet and i can see oh this is what i have to do to install a process so like okay that, that's that's great and very quickly that's not going to take nearly as much of her time and uh, I have her contracted, I think, for 20 hours a week, 20 hours a month. It's an hour a day. Yeah, no, uh, 20 hours a month, month. Yeah. an hour a day. And uh, I I am not sure that with just these two things, that's going to take up an hour a day. So I'm scratching a little bit for, like, what's the next thing to do? Uh, I was talking with, a, a, I think, a mutual friend of ours, uh, Brian Richards, who runs WP Sessions. And he uh, was part of my inspiration also to, to be ironing out this virtual assistant thing. So I was asking him. Uh, the sorts of things he does. And uh, he recommended outsourcing more of the less frequent uh, administrative tasks of things like mm -hmm. submitting quarterly reports and like bookkeeping. And uh, that's definitely all stuff that I can do because that's stuff that's pulling my attention away from the main business. But uh, I'm, I'm before I do that, I want to, I want to reach a little bit for, is there some other huge category of thing that she can be doing that's directly driving business value in the same category as customer support emails or uh, enabling customer interviews. Yeah. Um, it depends a little on what her, like, um, like what her, um, what she's good at and, and what you think she could handle. Um, I, mm. I mentioned before, like anything that customers have trouble with, you should probably have an article for, her. Um, you know, like SEO title nicely and stuff. Um, if she is able to write things, then, then, she could write that. If not, maybe she could find a writer for you. Um, ghostwriters are a thing, you know, they probably doesn't cost that, that, that much. If you, you know, have a, have it all, um, lined out, lined up. The other thing, I think you have a blind spot, uh, as a builder and as I do, uh, like for marketing. Um, mm -hmm. so when you started talking about that, the thing that I thought is like research about for like, you could do competitor research for, you know, what, articles do they have on their site that are seo targeted what you know places do you think that they are lacking what places do you think that they are good what places are they uh like do they have ads running um where should you be running ads uh, what are more of these forums like you find the sign printer forums you know what are more of those so there's like all these questions about like sort of your market that i think she could probably do research for um, um and uh that would probably be good uh yeah those are my two ideas i like that a lot i think the thing i'm taking from that is the next in the same way that deploy empathy was like my playbook for that's now directly work that i can give her because i can just say follow the script i think if i went through the 30 by 500 sales safari mm, yep. process and was re-reminded of like oh okay these are the these are the things you can do to be mining for uh people having this problem and i and i was and i was going through that with the mentality of i'm looking for systems that i can hand off to rachel i think that's the next step okay thank you that's very helpful um and uh, as part of the sales safari is uh a, a few of the things you mentioned of like competitor research and finding pain points and and writing articles um 
if she could write articles for me, that'd be really cool. Um, or if she could, or if she could hire a writer. That's she could at least find a ghostwriter. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. That that feels good. Uh, that feels like the next step. Uh, okay. I have the biggest thing I want to talk about, and I have two small things I want to talk about. Uh, I, let's get rid of the two small things first. Okay. Uh, uh, one small thing. Uh, I, I would just like an attaboy. Uh, Nerdle is a spinoff of Wordle. It's Wordle, but with math, math equations. I found out about this and then was able to take my existing solver at wordlesolver.com and very easily say like, okay, first I need to generate the dictionary. And that was a whole bunch of fun. The idea of it's, it's uh, eight characters long and uh, it has to be uh, of the type like, you know, 23 plus 32 equals, and then whatever 23 plus 32 equals. <laughs> 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 Math. <laughs> Math. <laughs> Uh, and that, that whole string has to take up, uh, eight characters. And it was a really fun puzzle of trying to figure out like, what's the most effective way to do this? Cause if you brute force it, my gosh, for, for, uh, what, you know, it's, it's plus minus divided by times equals, and then the nine digits. So it's 15 characters, uh, on an eight character string. Hmm. That's 15 to the power of eight. That's, uh, a lot. 2.5 billion combinations. Like going through that brute force, that would take so long. Um, but I was able to come up with a very clever trick of how to uh, drastically reduce that space. Uh, I basically figured out like the absolute maximum and the absolute minimum solution you could get. Uh, and it turned out it's it's like negative 900 and something is the, the smallest one. Uh, it's like, you know, zero minus nine times nine, nine times 99, something like that. Uh, so that was the negative, and then I, I did the absolute positive one, uh, and then just looped forward the solutions, and then from the solutions, I was able to iterate the, the front end. Uh, so then I had the dictionary, and then with that dictionary, I was able to just plug in directly into Wordle, uh, the, the Wordle solver that, solver that I made. Uh, and now I have a solver, solver for Nerdle 2, and that uh, felt really cool. Uh, the, that's it. Nice. That was that was the thing. That's really cool. Um, and yeah, that relates to the three blue, one brown that I sent you, which where he solved Wordle in a very different way, in a very mathy way. Um, I don't know if you watched it yet, but he used... Uh... I did, yeah. Looking at entropy was yep. a, an interesting way to look at that, that you're, you're trying to like reduce... You think about it in terms of bits, of like how many bits of information are you getting, and one bit decreases the space by half. Lots of math in there that I, I don't understand. He was able to reduce it to like a log formula yeah. of uh, uh, squaring it. Yeah, really, really interesting stuff. Uh, that was cool. Yeah. Um, also, when you're talking about very big numbers, I also recently watched the number files uh, about Graham's number. I think I watched that before too, but I watched it again. If you haven't watched it and you want your mind blown about big numbers, go watch Graham's number. Um, that's that's the number where if all of the universe was ink, you still wouldn't have enough ink to write down the number or something like that. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's pretty cool. Cool. What is what is Graham's number? It's just uh, a really big number. It. No, I mean, there's a there's a way to get it. It. Uh, has to do with cubes, and then okay. you uh, ways you, that you connect cubes. Go watch the thing. It's it's, it's yeah. Okay. Uh, it it is defined in a very certain way, and it's the first of these really really big numbers. There are now more, and there are now numbers that are bigger than that. Um, but it's not you can't just define a big number. You have to like have a way to come up with this big number that you know makes sense. So um, yeah. Anyway, it was interesting. How funny! <laughs> how funny that there's still boundaries to be pushed forward in math. <laughs> like making a bigger number. Like I would yeah. think. It would be as simple as like, ah, the Jenko number is Graham's number times two. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Yeah, interesting. Uh, cool. Okay, that was uh, small thing number one. Small thing number two, I was talking with my friend Trig, Trig Watson. Uh, he's a professional magician. I was working with him to make a robot arm that he can use on shows. And I was talking with him and he was like, oh yeah, I'm going to be on TV with this mm. in a month. And I was like, whoa, that's cool. He's going to be on the CW's Masters of Illusion with this robot that uh, I helped make. And that got me thinking like, oh, there's like six things in this that don't work very well. Mm. Uh, that if it's going to be on TV, like uh, I might as well fix those for you. And he was like, oh yeah. And also these three other things. So uh, I was able to, in short order, uh, doing some very clever stuff, uh, make a little joystick that can now control the robot arm. Um, and... Uh, pre-program some other things so it, it can like bow now as a as a uh, process and it can uh, shake itself around when it's shuffling the cards and it was, it just felt really good of like ah th there was this problem in the world and 
with focused attention, I was able to fix it. And uh, yeah, it, it felt good in a way that like, I don't think I would feel satisfied doing the type of work that's like finance of like trading <laughs> uh, trading crypto around, like would, would feel much more empty because at the end of the day, I'd be like, well, what did I really do? I made this number go up, but did that help anyone? And with this, I was like, ah, oh, I was able to put, you know, three hours towards this. And now that's going to mean that this TV spot is going to be cooler. <laughs> and uh, everyone who Trig does a show for now is going to have a, a better experience and uh, feel more magical feelings when they're watching this robot. So uh, that felt good. Yeah, that's really cool. It's also like super brave of him to use like as much as software crashes, like having a robot on stage for magic acts. Like one of the things about magic. So I, I like uh, Penn and Teller's Fool Us, uh, the show a lot. Yeah, yeah. And um, that's a super interesting show. And, and it's very obvious that magicians always have multiple outs. So like if the trick doesn't quite go right, like you, you mess up uh, an illusion or something like you're, you're doing multiple tricks usually. And so there's multiple like you know surprises or whatever and then there's always multiple outs so that if it really messes up you can still do something kind of interesting at the end yep. with robots like if it breaks it, it just breaks <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh yeah that's pretty brave i think to use uh on on tv but yeah cool chris you have no idea <laughs> if you could see some of the behind the scenes stuff i've seen you would be horrified yeah. like, the the rat's nest of just like it's a it's a cacophony of this Rube Goldberg machine of like that's really your your entire show is dependent on like this Bluetooth connection holding for the entire show yeah. and also that this thing is physically close to this other thing and that if this motor turns like this it's gonna pull this thing and that that thing's not gonna break and like oh my god yeah it's, and that's what he's riding on when he's on stage like it's nuts yeah. uh man and like oh the the the, the checklist he has for shows of the number of props and the number of things he needs to check, the number of batteries that have to stay charged. <laughs> it's incredible. It's, it's insane. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really cool. Uh, anyone listening, Google Trig Watson and some of the, some of the technological stuff he does. Like the most interesting part of that is the stuff going on behind the scenes that he's just like with a wish and a prayer, hoping like that the, that the battery is going to be charged. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. And the crazy part about that is like, so you mentioned a Bluetooth connection, uh, like you can practice that all you want, but until you get 2000 people with smartphones, all with Bluetooth on in yeah. an auditorium, you don't know yeah. how your Bluetooth connection is yeah. going to do. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, like that's, that's like uh, Wi-Fi for conventions. Like it seems crazy that Wi-Fi costs so much at conventions, but when yeah. you get like 10,000 people all with smartphones in one room, yeah. you can't just like stick up a router and hope it works. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's like the same thing. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's funny. It's, it's a whole other deployment. Like, for him for him shipping to production is like he is physically on the line like he's standing on stage yeah. perhaps on tv uh perhaps in front of thousands of people like yeah waiting for this thing to work and i asked him like okay this is this is sort of a precarious thing we're doing here like if any of the things in this update this thing is going to break like what what's the plan if that doesn't he was like oh you know i'm a performer i'll just make a joke about it or something and, and move on uh yeah I, I think that comes with just like being very seasoned and uh, you know, he's probably got like a backup routine or something he can do in, in his pocket and just be like, well, sometimes things don't work. All right, here we go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I'm still incredibly impressive. Uh, okay. All right, here we go. On to the big Okay. Thing. All right. Do you know who Jordan Peterson is? Uh, uh, he, I think he's an author and I, he sounds familiar and I don't know anything else. <laughs> Perfect. I, I, I can't remember. Uh, I would like to start by saying, I recognize Jordan Peterson is a bit of a controversial, controversial character. Uh, he is an author. He's written three books, Maps of Meaning, 12 Rules for Life, and uh, Beyond Order, 12 More Rules for Life, which are sort of self-help, sort of psychology, sort of philosophy of like, here are tips to be living a better life. And it's things like... Uh, stand up straight with your shoulders back and then he'll go through the whole thing of like your your physical posture uh determines your mood and that's how your body figures out what your status is uh and this is a very old thing and so evolutionarily if you just act in a more confident way you will feel more confident and then that'll be a positive feedback loop and you'll spiral up or things like uh uh, don't bother children when they're skateboarding because it's very important when kids are doing something like uh, sledding down a hill that you're not holding them back and protecting them because it's much better for them developmentally if instead of making the world safe for them, 
you make them strong enough to be able to navigate a dangerous world. Um, and some of the things that he said uh, ruffle people's feathers. Uh, he, he has very strong stances on the gender pay gap. Uh, he, he claims that the gender pay gap, if you, uh, if you control for things like uh, lifestyle, and I'm, I'm not super familiar with this particular issue, but he, he claims the gender pay gap doesn't exist uh, and that it, it, if you look at the data uh, from the way that he thinks it should be viewed, you, you get a much clearer perspective of that. Uh, that's not a very popular thing to say in 2022. The you know women's rights have worked very hard to be able to point out, like, hey, men and women are getting treated differently in the workplace. That's not okay. Uh, he famously uh, was in the news for uh, a, a gender pronoun bill or something in Canada um, that was trying to trying to trying to protect uh, people who use different pronouns, so people uh, who uh, identify with non-binary genders. And uh, in digging into that issue more, it seems like the thing he was saying was like he just doesn't think it should be illegal to call someone by the wrong pronoun, which I think is what they were trying to pass in Canada. Um, but you know that that is. Uh, a, a inflammatory thing to say in 2022 uh, and I think 2019 when it was uh, being popular because like people who are transgender that's that's a, a t part of the population that's uh, vulnerable that like you, you want to be lifting up uh, I say this because I, I just want to couch like I understand this is a controversial figure uh, and this is someone whose work has benefited me a lot in my life uh, I've, I've loved his books he has a, a program in particular called the, the self-authoring program. Uh, that's this journaling exercise where you go through your life and like talk about the things that you want, and how you'd like your life to be different, and uh, how you you write an autobiography in the in the course of going through this exercise that talks about the most meaningful and impactful things in your life. And he has this point that if there's any memory you have that's older than 18 months old uh, that you still feel a strong memory about, that's a that's an indication that there's something unresolved there that your body's trying to tell you, like there's a thing here that we haven't figured out yet. There's this dangerous hole that you fell into and we're not confident that if you encounter the same hole that, that you'd be prepared that you'd fall in again. So part of this exercise is like walking through that and, and being able to, to come to terms with it. Uh, so uh, I, I feel like I've set this up uh, well enough now. Uh, I know that this is a controversial figure. Uh, this is someone whose work uh, has helped me a lot personally. Uh, so it's it's someone I admire a lot. I have tickets to see him in Midland, Texas tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to get to meet him. I'm going to get to shake his hands. I'm going to get to say, hey, uh, this is the second time I've done this. Uh, I'm very excited. <laughs> We're going to get a picture. I'm going to get to shake his hand. And last time I saw him, I uh, something I like to do is like make people crazy gifts. Uh, it feels like a, a cool hack of like getting to network with people who that this is uh, how I became friends with Patrick McKinsey. I, I like custom made him this jacket with his logo on it. Uh, and now we're friends. And the, that was really cool. You, like you did that. Yeah, I did. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's talked about that before. I didn't know that. Yeah, was he has. Uh, and I've had people come up to me like, that's a really good hack for like getting connected with people who are, yeah. uh, you know, in, in, uh, a higher position than you because like that's like you know i don't care if you're obama like if someone gives you this thing that's like hey i read a lot about you and like here's this deeply personal gift that i think you find very meaningful like you're gonna remember that person so the last time i saw him i made him the same sort of gift that was a uh, 3d printed uh version of his logo that was printed in metal and like i, I put a bunch of work into the, the uh different panes and coloring it and uh looking back on it it was kind of uh, shit. <laughs> Cause I'm not very good at that. <laughs> but, uh, when I gave it to him, I remember so vividly, he said, uh, that's quite the piece. And I was, I just felt so good. <laughs> and, uh, it wasn't terrible. It, it, like it was, it was reasonable. It just wasn't, it wasn't like great. Uh, but it, it was a thing that I made. So I was trying to think about like, I bought these tickets a few months ago and I was trying to think about like, do I make him a better one of those? Uh, I would love to do something in the same sort of vein of like helping him to remember uh, who I am and like if I could tie it back to that somehow. Uh, and I had the thought, the self-authoring program that I did is a web app. And while the exercises are fantastic and like there's all these testimonials on YouTube of how much these exercises have helped people, I struggle to use it. There's some There's some usability things that are just like, you know, making a making a piece of software 101 uh that are 
I, I felt like I'm in a position to, to easily fix. Things like the login system is uh, a little bit too many steps and like uh, the interface isn't mobile optimized and like uh, the, the text boxes when you're writing, you have to manually click save. Um, things that like I was thinking, you know, I could, I could slap something together in a few days that fixes a lot of these underlying issues. Um, so I did. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remade uh, the self-authoring program and I scaffolded out a little bit like one of the exercises uh and now i'm in this position where i have this thing and i want to give it to him in a way that's not saying hey your thing is shit and i made it better <laughs> and yeah. look at how much better i am than you uh which is something i did in high school small aside i was in theater and the theater website was terrible and me as this spunky little 13 year old was like hey your website sucks I remade it for you. You're welcome. And the only thing that accomplished was making people mad at me. Uh, so I don't want to do that. Uh, so the, the, the question I would like to ask you is, if you were Jordan Peterson and you had this website that you developed with one of your students that's helped a whole bunch of people that you made like 10 years ago, but you've got other stuff going on. You're written, writing books and you're doing tours and you're writing this new app called Essay to help people do essays and stuff. Uh, what? What interaction would you want to have with me? I'm going to have like 30 seconds to talk to this guy. Uh, I'm thinking I hand him the website, print it on a business card or something. Uh, what what would maximize my chance of success of like having this be received in a in a good way? What are your thoughts about that? Yeah, or so anything I'll, else I've said. I've been talking sure. for like 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, you have lots of uh, lots of things you said. So I'll unpack some of those things. Um, the first is about controversial figures like um, unless someone, um, I, like, I understand totally what you're saying. Um, it, I think the world has more nuance than, um, we give it credit for. And unless you are being purposefully like, you know, inflammatory, um, I think, uh, it is easy to be a controversial figure. Uh, I, I'm not trying to defend anyone. I'm just trying to say, like, I, I understand that you have part of his work that is controversial and part of his work that has really helped you like that, that, mm -hmm. that is, that is something, you know, we can pull both of those things in our head. So, okay. um, then the other thing I will say is if I was receiving a gift, first of all, I think it's really neat that you make uh, gifts that people like anytime you give a gift that you can't buy to someone else, like you, you yeah. can't buy, you know, Patrick McKenzie's, uh, logo on a, on a sweatshirt, like yeah, you yeah. can't buy that. So that, that's just a really neat gift. Um, and, and so that's cool. But if you're giving someone a website, uh, that's kind of like giving them, uh, I actually think this is a Patrick, Mc, Patrick McKenzieism too. That's give, like giving him a free puppy, which, which yeah. is like, <laughs> uh, you get or give them this thing, which might be really neat, uh, but also which might take a lot of work. And so whatever yeah. you give him, make sure it takes zero work on his part. Yeah. And so I don't know how to do that. Um, but like it, if I go to a show and I do a show and then afterwards I meet people, I don't want someone to hand me, you know, like a to-do list. Um, yeah. So however you can, you know, frame that, you can be something like, you know, I really liked your program. Uh, I liked your app. I, I made it, you know, in a slightly different way that, that really helps me out. Um, you know, I would like love to walk the person who runs your site through it or something like I, hmm, I don't know. That, that's tricky. It's tricky, but whatever you do, make sure you don't give him work to do. Yeah. That, that, I guess that's, that's a good thing to keep in mind. Yeah, yeah I, I like the framing of not giving someone a puppy. When I was telling my sister about this, I, I had the analogy that it's kind of like giving someone a bank account. Like, mm. you don't have to transfer money into it if you don't want to. <laughs> you you could just look at it and be like, ah, oh, I could take things from this and steal them and, and use them for my own thing. Which I, I wrote him a letter as part of this, uh, talking about how like I'm I'm not wanting to be brought on for contracting. I'm not expecting to be paid or anything. If he wants to just take this and use my code i would love to help do that with as little friction as possible if he wants to just like look at it and uh the the main developer for the site just wants to like copy some of the things that were more helpful like that i'm totally fine with that too uh i, I really just honestly want to make this thing better this this is coming from a place of like there are a lot of people in my life who i think would benefit from this program who when i have tried to get them on it because of those points of friction of how it's currently made they're not able to get that benefit so i'd, I'd like to change that um there is also a, a like there's a guy who like Jordan Peterson didn't make this site himself. Uh, one of his former right. students who is this MIT uh, uh, grad who super smart uh, has like a whole technology company. He's the one running this uh, and one of his other sites. And so like, man, I really don't want to step on this guy's toes. <laughs> like, yeah, the thing you made sucks. <laughs> uh, 
you know, Jordan Peterson should be friends with me instead of you. Like, that's not, that's not what I'm trying to do. Uh, but that is a very delicate thing of like, man, what would I do if, that, if I was that guy? Like, who the hell is this random kid, Christian Jenko, who made this thing? Is he just trying to like steal the data from this thing? Uh, yeah, it's, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I, I would really like for this thing to be well-received. Uh, and I think any any edge I can get there would, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I, it's, I would frame it as like, it was really impactful for me. I'm trying to make it impactful for some other people. I, I would love to give you some, you know, just I would like to work on it for free for, for a little bit to, to try to, you know, help some of the things that, because I'm sure the developer, like all developers know that some of their stuff just doesn't work, right? So if yeah. you, like, if, if you are offering like free work and so this is why i say don't give him homework like as long as he's still supporting it like if this is something they built once and it's just running on a server somewhere and they don't want to touch it again they're not mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how good your offer is they're not going to take you up on it right um so yeah so i i guess i would say yeah don't give him work and also expect that he just may be like um no thanks yeah <laughs> like that, yeah that's the thing that might happen um but he also might be like uh yeah cool i'll put you in contact with the you know the, the other guy so yeah um yeah that's what i would say I would be sad if he said that, and also that's that would be totally fine if he wanted to just be yeah. like, ah, cool. I, I spent, I don't know, something like, uh, well, not something like, I spent exactly 16 and a half hours on this <laughs> over over the of course, course of- Of course uh, you know. Yeah, yeah over, uh, over three or four days, and learned a lot while I was doing it, and uh, it just felt like I was jamming that that's, this is the, the deep flow work that I was uh, alluding to earlier in the episode of like, man, it was just so much fun. I woke up in the morning, it was just like excited to, to work on this thing again, and- had a bunch of ideas of, uh, ah, I could have like auto dictation. I'm like, ah, I could use this tailwind component that I've never been able to use before. Now ah, I could have the, the progress bar be inside of the, uh, the button to go to the next page. And so like, once it's loaded, it becomes the next button that I, I felt really clever. Um, yeah. So like, you know, even, even if the thing that happens is I give this to him and he's like, the hell is this? <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, the, the thing we have works perfectly fine. Like, uh, I would feel a little dejected and also, uh, you know, that this is still a thing that I made that I feel proud of that, uh, if nothing else, like I'm going to go through the new platform that I made cause I, I prefer the interface. Uh, all right. Wish me luck. Uh, I, I am, I'm doing this tomorrow. I see him tomorrow evening. I, it's a five hour drive. I accidentally booked tickets oh, huh? in uh, Midland, Texas, which is five hours from the Irving with the city I live in. <laughs> I was trying to buy tickets for it, but that's neither here nor there uh it's it's gonna be an exciting night all right yeah well cool good luck and uh yeah i mean we've talked about this before but yeah as long as what you do helps you then it doesn't matter what other people think of it you know because yeah you, so yeah it's sort of, it was sort of a, a no lose situation uh it was fun in the moment and now i have a thing that's better for me to do and uh to, to go through personally and uh i might share it with people like after they've bought it through the main platform um, so I'm not just like giving his program away for free. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All around. Like it's, it, I, I, I could not lose by working on this thing. Uh, I got to practice writing landing pages. It is so much easier to write landing pages for other people than it is for me. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like the whole thing of like touting and, and tooting the horn of like, Hey, this is a thing that'll help you. Like I get so self-conscious when writing it for myself, but in going through this, I was like, oh yeah, obviously this is a tool that really helps people that I know, like if I had made this thing, I would feel so much more self-conscious about that. Of, <laughs> I feel so cocky and braggy that like this can cure your depression. Like right. uh, maybe it can. Uh, it, yeah. It, All right. This cool. is something else we could talk about a whole different other time, but like that's one reason why I think people find it, like me too, find it easier to be someone as employee rather than the founder. Like it's mm. so much easier. Once someone has laid out what they're doing, it's so much easier to just execute on that yeah. um, than it is to like, come up with the thing <laughs> and everything yeah so, yeah yeah pick yeah. the direction and like sometimes the direction you pick is stupid and dumb <laughs> yeah but it's something you have to live with as the ceo but as yeah. the worker you can just sort of be like this ceo doesn't know what he's doing i'm still yeah. gonna go plug away and then do the work I anyway he's yeah bad yeah yep. uh yeah it's yeah uh it's it's not an obvious trade-off to to be the one in charge uh all right cool i'm nervous and excited uh and i'm glad we had this chat chris that's all i got that's all i got too then i'll see you next week goodbye